Hello and welcome to the RAST Network. What you're about to hear and see is limited to general financial information only. Please be sure to speak to your financial planner or refer to our financial services guide available at rask.com.au slash FSG before acting on the information. Hello and welcome back to our summer series on the Australian Finance Podcast. I'm your host, Kate Campbell, and if you're new here, welcome. Throughout our summer series, we're going to give you some super actionable tips and tricks throughout the month to get your finances in fighting form for the year ahead. Stay tuned for plenty of episodes on savings hacks, career tips, income stocks, ETFs, and much more. Today, I'm chatting with Queenie and Pablo, Australian personal finance content creators. I've got them on the show today to share some of their favorite tips to help us manage the cost of living in 2024. They have plenty of ideas, so I hope you'll find something interesting in today's episode that you can try out in your own life. Enjoy the conversation. Queenie and Pablo, welcome on to the Australian Finance Podcast today. Oh, thank you so much for having us, Kate. We're so excited to chat. Yeah, really excited. And happy new year. Happy new year to you both. <laughs> happy new year to you too, happy Kate. Happy new year, Kate. Now, we're going to talk about heaps of different savings tips and tricks today because that is what the two of you are known for. And you've got some fantastic resources on your own Instagram page and your podcast, which is always a fun one to listen to. And we'll make sure to mention them at the end of the show. But I guess to kick things off, I was wondering if both of you could share some of your best purchases under $50 from the past year. Ooh, okay, good question. So we recently bought this label maker and um, it was really interesting because we've always like wanted one. It's always been on the list. To be honest, I thought that label makers were like $200 or $100 plus, but we recently found one and it was only, I think it was like $37 something like that. So $37.50, which I was just so surprised at. And it's such a good quality. And it like came with all the tapes so we can print labels. And um, I know this is going to sound really funny, but we've just been having a blast, like printing labels and like labeling things. Like our whole pantry is like so nicely organized now with like nice little sticky notes. And um, Pablo's even started labeling some of our hard drives for work. And like he's brought it into the office to label like boxes. So yeah, it's actually a really good. I, we're using it a lot more than I thought. Yeah, I think it's very peak, good because you know. Adulthood. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Because we used to have so much stuff in our pantry and we always buy, like maybe we have like risotto rice and then we're going to buy it again because it's so far behind. But now we can't even get confused. We know exactly what we have in our pantry and we don't buy too much anymore. It's so satisfying printing out those labels. It's like... Oh, and then seeing them, it's like, oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so a fun activity and saving you money on food because you aren't double buying and you know what you've got. Exactly. It. What about you, Pablo? I think one good purchase we've made under $50 is a yoga mat. So I think we listening to a lot of podcasts actually about like longevity and things like that. And one thing that we notice is that, you know, if you want to live a good life when you're older, is have good mobility because you got to enjoy it more. And we've been like using our yoga mat every single night now, just, you know, doing stretching and things like that. And that's really been helpful for us, I'd say. I love that. I love that. And thinking about going into the new year, how can you add more movement into your life? Because as I've said before, there's no point being wealthy and dead. So you want to make sure that you have the body use your money and what about some challenges that have you had any challenges over the past year I know a lot of us have been trying to deal with the cost of living and inflation and our mortgage payments going up how how have you been managing any of those challenges yeah I guess um we've been I guess our main challenge has been well we're trying to grow our business so we're trying to like leave as much money as we can in our business, not take too much out personally. So we pay ourselves about $60,000 per year individually. So it's been a bit of a challenge like to try and just manage our budget, make sure that we can fit everything into our budget and still invest. Uh, but I think we do have a good balance. Like I feel like we, we do know we have enough money to like have fun still, still investing. Um, but yeah, it definitely has been a challenge for sure. And I think, yeah, when we're not earning as much as we used to, when I used to work in corporate, um, 
yeah, I, I was earning a lot more than 60000 a year. So it has been like a bit of a struggle to manage. What about you, Pablo? Yeah, I think it has been a challenge, but it's nice to, you know, make our own money and, you know, be more in control of that because think about it in corporates. You think you have control, but they can let you go at any time, especially during COVID times. It was pretty crazy. And one challenge I actually just thought about is uh, we used to rent an apartment like a couple of months ago, and they literally increased our rent from 685 to 760 uh, with like, you know, just two months notice, like without any negotiation or room for negotiation. And that was quite a bit of a challenge. And luckily, we had bought an apartment, which we could move back in. But that was pretty interesting. Yeah, I think I, I definitely feel for a lot of people out there that, you know, it, you just don't know if you have a bad landlord or like, you know, it's it's really difficult. So, um yeah, I, I didn't realize, like, because I guess we've been lucky in the past to have, like, really good landlords when we've been renting. But, yeah, we just got a bit unlucky with this one, I guess. <laughs> yeah. What about yeah. you, Kay? What, what are some great purchases you've made for under $50 and any challenges this year? Ooh, I think I've mentioned it on the podcast before, but a meat thermometer has been an excellent purchase and getting multiple sets of house keys made up because then when you... And you will forget them at some point. You have some stashed with a family member close by or a friend uh, and you don't have to pay a locksmith to get your door opened. So I think that's a really good one. Have backups of the important things like house keys. Yeah, um, that is a good one. Yeah, and I guess challenges. I think dealing with increases in mortgage rates. So that's been a challenge, sort of having to keep rejigging the budget and things like that costs of bills and things going up. So it's just been a, a reminder to really regularly check in with my expenses because they if you don't check in with them for six months, suddenly you realize they're hundreds of dollars more than they were six months prior. So it's really important to check in with your expenses, see if you can get a better deal, see if you can get a better rate. And that's been one of my big learnings over the past year. Now, I think just like looking ahead, I'm really keen because you guys set goals and we talk about goal setting in your investing course. So that's linked in the show notes if anyone wants to have a look at that. But how are you thinking about goal setting this year? Are there any things you've got your eye on? Are you still using your uh, 90 day framework that you've talked about in the, the past? Yes. Oh, I love goal setting. And this time of year is the perfect time to start goal setting. I would say, I think goal setting is just so important. And I've only just realized uh, quite recently, only over the past couple of years, just how important it is. Because when you think about it, when you get in a car and you have no direction of where you're going, you're going to end up nowhere, you know? But if you have a clear plan of where you want to go, where you want to end up, you know, it's very likely that you will take yourself there. And I think the same goes with goals as well throughout life. If you don't set any goals, you're kind of going to end up nowhere in particular, you know, and, and probably not even in a place where you'd like to end up. So I think it's really important to set goals. So something that we do is we, every... 90 days, we set some goals for ourselves, like personally, um, in our business, in our life and kind of like friendships and um, yeah, and like family stuff as well. And we create a vision board of what we would like our life to look like. And it, it's pretty amazing because when I first started doing vision boards, I did think it was a little bit silly, you know, like, is it really going to happen? Am I just putting pictures up and <laughs> It's going to be a bit silly, but we realized um, from our last vision board that we put up these photos and everything had happened, you know, in that, that past 90 days, you know, one of the things that we wanted was a studio to be able to record our content and our videos. And now we have that, you know, we wanted somewhere where we could charge our Tesla in our garage. And now we have that. And it's like all of these little things that we put on the board thinking like we would love these things one day. It, it kind of happens sooner than you expect if you just put the put them out there into the universe. And as long as they're things that you actually genuinely want, I think sometimes we might get caught in the trap of like adopting other people's goals for our life. But if you really check in and actually know what you really want to do with your life, you will make it happen if you set that goal. Yeah. What do you think, Pablo? Yeah, I think it's very true. And like you said, Kate, we use still our 90-day 
a gold template, which is really useful because we can achieve so much more than setting up just one goal for the whole year. And then at the end of the year, we may have forgotten about that goal. And that's something we try to do every single week is recap on how we're going towards this goal and what has been done. And that's been really useful, you know, because setting goals is good. It's a good step. But if you want to achieve it or you need to be accountable and have someone maybe that can ask you what has been done towards that goal and also look at it every single week so that by the 90 days you have like made some progress. And do you set goals, Kate? I certainly do. And I think that's really important to mention because you're putting, you're sort of brainstorming that vision board process is thinking about all the different things you want to achieve. But the other piece of the puzzle is that you're, uh, you are taking regular action that's sort of happening behind the scenes. People aren't seeing all of those small things you're doing every day to work towards your goal and to, to have a studio and to have a Tesla charging port. There's a lot of small actions that you're taking behind the scenes. And I think that's always an important thing to keep in mind because we can look at everyone's goals and what they reach on the outside, but we don't see all of the things they take behind the scenes and the steps they take, maybe the the things they have to prioritize and not prioritize to reach that. I think for me this year, I'm just focusing on putting money into my offset account, making sure I'm in a really strong financial position, continuing to reduce my spending and keep following my investing plan. I think I'm at the point in my own financial journey where I don't need to change things. I'm pretty happy with the investing plan I put in place a few years ago. The amount of money I can put away each month has changed over time as different market conditions, different uh, income levels. But the the gist of the plan has stayed the same. And I think that's a really important thing to remind people that you don't have to keep changing your goals and your plans. Sometimes you've got something and it works and you can keep keep plodding along with that, which is something that's, it's nice to hear that because I think we can get in that trap that we have to keep fixing things and changing things and adding things and making things more complicated. And we don't, do we? Mm, That's true. That's true. Now, what I really wanted to talk about in this episode is how we can save money this year. And a lot of us have heard the the old saving tips that might be just like change providers with your bills. But I was wondering, Queenie and Pablo, do you have anything maybe a little bit more interesting for us this year and how we can save money, how we can improve our cash flow and manage the cost of living a little bit better? I think for me, a good thing is deal stacking. So, you know, at the moment, like you can easily find like discounts, especially last year, there was like Black Friday or Boxing Day. And there was like some good discounts, but if you stack on top of each other, each deal, so finding like either a price match somewhere and then get a welcome discount on top of that, or like a cashback app from like Shopback or Cash Rewards, you can get like really, really good discount. And Mm -hmm. I think that's a good way to get really good saving is that finding the best price, getting it from another shop, getting a price match, then getting a 9% or, you know, whatever cashback you can get on top of that. And that's a good way to really get the good price. The only thing is that it's time consuming. So you don't want to spend half a day getting like, you know, $5 extra, but it can be good. Like if you make like big purchase for us, we got like recently a new camera and we saved almost a thousand dollars just by doing this because it's expensive. So that was good. Mm. Wow. Are there any yeah, tools that work point. that you use, Pablo, for this? We use, there is this good tool that is called Zift, Z-Y-S-T. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's actually a, a good app that it's like a Chrome extension that can help you find if there is a better price elsewhere. So that's a good way to do it. Also, you just search if it's like an exact item in Google. And then usually they have a list of all the items with the price, mm. and you can find where it's cheaper after shipping. I like that. And I did use cash rewards quite a bit last year. Um, if you know you're going to make a big purchase using something like cash rewards or honey, uh, also to get some money back or a discount is great. What about you, Queenie? Any tips for us? Yes, I would say comparing different offerings. So there are lots of different companies now that offer the same thing. But I think just like spending a little bit of time, like just comparing the prices, like for example, 
whenever whenever I'm booking an Uber or a Didi now, I always compare a few different apps. So I'll usually have two installed, like Uber and Didi. And wherever I'm, whenever I'm going somewhere, I'll always just like double check, you know, is um, like which one's cheaper. And it's actually interesting by just doing this process. There was this one time we were able to save about $30, 30 to $50 on just one Uber trip, just because we compared different apps. Um, so it doesn't just apply to if you want to buy something, but just um, in general, like through your everyday life, even booking restaurants and things like that. There are lots of apps you can use to find cheaper deals on restaurants. So uh, one we like using is First Table. You can get 50% off your food bill if you book your table a bit earlier or later. Um, another one is Eat Club and it has like a similar concept where you can just kind of like book in a little bit earlier and get a discount. So I think planning these things rather than just kind of like, you know, just rocking up, f trying to find somewhere to eat, you know, you can save yourself quite a bit of money and still also enjoy, you know, the convenience of having ride sharing apps and also the convenience of eating out every now and again. Yeah, I think that's a great thing. If you think a little bit out of the box or you plan things a bit ahead, often you can take advantage of things like happy hours or on X day of the week, a restaurant does a special. Um, and that's a really cool thing to, to keep an eye out, out for. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What, what else have you got for us, Queenie? I would say um, there's this other website which we like using called Oz Bargain. And if there's anything that you want to buy, you can actually put in a price alert. So the way that we usually do that is there was this time, um, I think like last year, we were looking to buy a Dyson Airwrap or the year before. So what we did was we went onto Oz Bargain, searched for the Dyson Airwrap. And then there's this little kind of like button that you can click, which is like, create a price alert and it basically emails you whenever there's a good discount on the Dyson Airwrap. So instead of having to like check the price every week or like, you know, go through a long process, you can just get emails whenever there's a deal on something that you're already looking to buy. And it also kind of like makes you really think about your purchases before you buy them because, you know, if you have to wait a month or two, you can really understand, like, do you actually really want this purchase or not? Yeah, exactly. One trip tip that uh, some of our friends uh, shared with us is that if you have something on your list, you know, like you need to be able to remember it. If you don't remember what's on your list, you should probably not buy it. Yeah, I think keeping lists and actually thinking about the purchase for a while is a really helpful strategy because often we want the item and we go out and buy it straight away and we get that instant gratification, but it might not be the item we want. We might be able to find a better deal or we could get the item secondhand. And that's probably something else that listeners should be thinking about this year is can they get the item on Gumtree or Marketplace? Can they get the item from a neighbor and just borrow it for a while? Is someone in your family got this item in their cupboard that they don't need? I have uh, done that myself um, over the past few years, uh, moving into a new place, a lot of people have stuff in their kitchen that's been in the back cupboard for a while that they don't really need, or they have ended up with three whisks in the kitchen and they don't really need three and they're quite happy to give you one. And so you don't have to buy something necessarily. Is oh, that yeah. uh, how you got your meat thermometer, Kate? Oh no, I got that one. I got that one brand new, but that was about seven seven dollars. Um, I'm not sure if one should share meat thermometers. <laughs> Maybe it's a more personal <laughs> item. Um, but yeah, basically everything else in my kitchen was hand me downs from friends and family and um, other people that were downsizing and didn't need the furniture or the cutlery or the plates anymore. So I managed to score quite a few bargains there, luckily. But otherwise. Even op shops, I feel like we don't talk about op shops as much anymore, um, but they're a great place to go and find forks and plates and spoons and cups and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, and it's more eco-friendly too. I would say also doing like clothes swaps with friends. So every couple of months or so, like I organize like a little night with my friends where we all bring a bag of clothes that we no longer wear or use anymore. And it's like by the end of the night, you end up picking up a few things that, you know, you didn't even have to buy. And then also, I think it's 
One thing to mention is that when you do donate your clothes, even though a lot of us donate our clothes, hoping it goes to like, you know, someone in need or at least goes in the op shops for people to buy, a lot of those clothes actually get thrown out and they don't actually end up in stores and they don't actually end up in the hands of people who need them. So if you can find a way to actually swap it with a friend that's actually going to use it, it might actually be a better use of your clothes than just kind of like donating everything and, you know, hoping that it ends up in stores. Does Pablo join in? <laughs> I go out for dinner with the guy friends <laughs> while Courtney is uh, having her girlfriends at home. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. We also started swapping things like makeup and things. Sometimes like I've bought something that I thought I wanted that, that would suit me. And then I realized the lipstick shade is slightly off and it doesn't suit me. And it's like, I'll have a friend that the lipstick suits perfectly. It's yeah, good thing to do. Yeah. And even just asking that the question a little bit, because often people have something that they've just got lying around. I mean, if I just look around me and my study right now, there's a lot of things that have just been there for a long period of time that I haven't touched in over a year that I could probably find a good home for, find someone that is actually going to use that item uh, if I'm not using it or I could sell it. And that's probably a, that's another good way to get a bit of extra cash. If you can sell your, your item secondhand on Marketplace or Gumtree or somewhere in your local community, that's a good way to connect, but also get some extra cash this year when things are a bit tighter. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. And you could maybe create a new podcast series, Kate, trying to sell all your <laughs> unwanted items. <laughs> there's a few, there's a few. There's a lot of cables, though, that I don't know what they connect to. So that's uh, that's another challenge for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, something else that we've started doing recently is propagating our indoor plants because plants can be really expensive, you know, and sometimes they die. So what we've started doing is just like taking cuttings from our existing plants that are thriving and then just like you just put them in a jar of water and you leave them, you know, maybe like refill the jar of water when it starts to get a bit dry. And, um, yeah, we were able to make like two free plants the other day, yeah, which is pretty they cool. grow the roots and then you can replant them later on. So it takes maybe about two months. That's really, really good. Yeah, it's like, you know, unlimited plants. <laughs> it's really Sounds cool. Sounds like a great gift idea one. as well. Yeah, exactly. All you need is like, I guess, a nice pot, which you could probably buy from like Bunnings or even go to some op shops. Like they have, you know, flower pots and things you could get for cheap and, you know, replant a cutting. It's actually, actually works surprisingly well and it looks really cool too. Mm. Have you got in, into doing handmade or homemade gifts? I Can like we add the uh, labels on our gifts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Personalized, personalized gifts for people. <laughs> uh, I think sometimes we like cooking, you know. I think I would like to do more of that because we got a Thermomix and uh, it's been amazing for making like I guess, cookies and things like that and like baking things from scratch. So I would like to do more of that, like baking things, like things that people could eat and like consume, mm. you know, instead of buying like a bottle of wine, you know, maybe you could make them like a nice cake or some cookies or something like that, you know. Yeah, it's good. Cooking is nice to make like it a bit more personal. Actually, last time when we did our like gender reveal party, Connie made like some pink cookie and some blue cookie. So instead of getting it at the shop, it cost us like maybe $10 and we had like so many cookies. Yeah, the cookies are really good. <laughs> yeah. Which cookie won? Yeah. Oh, the pink ones for sure. <laughs> one. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, the blue ones, the color was a little bit off as well. So they looked a little bit kind of turquoisey. <laughs> Did you not think? quite edible. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. sweaty, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. And touching That's on probably... food, I guess another tip that we do is buying food online now. So yeah. instead of going to the supermarket and spending a lot of time finding it, plus, you know, we talked about having it nicely organized. We can see at home easily what we have, and so we can we don't buy as much stuff because we, we see what we have. And on top of that, it doesn't save, it saves quite a bit of time to not spend uh, at the supermarket, but we just click 
what we want, find like the best price per items. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good time saving plus money saving on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. Is this through Woolies or Coles when you're just doing the online delivery? Yeah, I would just do like click and collect. So we don't even pay for the delivery and we just get it like the same day. Yeah, that's good. And nowadays they actually have the option so that you can bring your own bags because I used to not like doing it because um, they used to put them in those like plastic bags and you'd have to pay for the bags. And then also you've got all this plastic waste. But nowadays they just kind of like fill up a trolley with groceries. And then when you come to pick them up, you can just put them in your own reusable bags and then take them home, which is quite nice. Yeah. Do you do any other online food shopping? Like do you buy any ingredients in bulk or things like that? We will buy restock on essentials during like uh, sales, like Black Friday and, uh, you know, Boxing Day. So, for example, yep. we will buy like protein powder or like dishwashing tablets that are like things that's going to last us a long time. We'll buy those during sales because we know it's going to last a long time and we can buy in bulk. Yeah, yeah. Like we got so many dishwashing tablets the other day because we found a really good deal on them. And, you know, those sorts of things, they never really expire. And it's always good to have like an extra packet of dishwashing tablets. <laughs> <laughs> There's always the danger. I, I um, bought in bulk toilet paper from Who Gives a, Who Gives a Crap. Um, I think it was a 200 pack. And I realized it didn't fit in my cupboard. So um, I had to put a few toilet rolls in different places throughout the house, but it has lasted for over a year and a half. So um, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. Maybe I did too much pre-purchasing, but that's one way to do it. Like buying something that you know you're going to use, like whether it's dishwashing tablets or toilet paper or cleaning products, getting that on sale, getting that in bulk, um, as long as you can store it somewhere um, and you have the money to, to buy it in advance, that's a good way to get things at a discount and save a bit of money. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because let's say you make like 50%, like getting for 50% cheaper, it's like a guaranteed discount. When, I mean, you invest in the stock market, making 50% is really hard. <laughs> We've done that with toilet paper too from Costco. <laughs> I think we still have a few rolls like in cupboards and stuff. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the toilet paper is one to be mindful of because... Sometimes you can just have so much. <laughs> Maybe it's a story between Australian and toilet paper, you know. During COVID, there was this toilet paper like uh, shortage. Oh, yeah. That was extreme, hey? <laughs> I'll have it mentioned that this purchase was after sort of the COVID thing was over. This was once there was full <laughs> stocks of toilet paper in Australia. But um, what about, you mentioned the Costco membership. Do you think that saved you quite a bit of money over time? Well, when we initially got it, we used it a lot. I think we'll probably cancel our membership because we don't use it as much because we're not as close as we used to be from the Costco. Mm. Um, but I think it does. It does for sure for some things. But you do have to be careful because I guess we, we initially got the membership. We just assumed that everything was cheaper there, you know, and then once we were in the stores and we started to actually compare the prices between Woolies and Coles and Costco, what we realized is that I guess the normal Costco prices, a lot of the time it's actually not a good deal, especially if you can get something on sale at the supermarket already. I remember um, we used to buy a lot of like coconut water from Costco because we do like coconut water every now and again. And um, I just noticed that when Coles and Woolies has like any sort of discount, 20%, 30%, sometimes they even do half price coconut water. It was so much cheaper than Costco. And I think some things you are overpaying. But then there are some items like maple syrup, which we use all the time. And you can get this like one litre jar of maple syrup, which you can't get at Coles and Woolies. It's like usually like only the 250 mils. It's one litre and it's like pure Canadian maple syrup. It's so much cheaper. I think that one was like maybe four times cheaper than the supermarket. So some items I think are great, but not everything. So you kind of have mm -hmm. to like run the numbers yourself. Just be yeah. mindful that, yeah, just because you're buying so many of them doesn't mean that it's always a good deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you have to take into consideration the price of the membership 
and you, they make you go there more often because you have the membership, you want to use it more. So I guess it's calculated for for them. But like Kuni said, some items are cheaper, maybe some when they're on sale, they are like similar pricing. And then if you are close to Costco, it's fine. But if you have to drive, pay tolls to get there, then maybe, you know, it's not always worth it. And like for us, we're only two people, soon to be free, but it's not like we have a very big family. So yeah. it's not that much like, and that's why we're considering maybe not keeping that, the membership next year. But one thing I thought was quite good is um, I think if you like host events and parties and things like that, they have some really amazing like food catering options. Like you can buy these like massive like packets of sandwiches, which are like really, really good quality, very affordable. You can buy like mini burger sliders and like, you know, big tubs of like chicken wings and stuff so if you're somebody that kind of like hosts like kids parties birthday parties corporate events like often they have really good quality catering food that that you really wouldn't be able to find those prices like through a caterer or anywhere else and it would take you a lot longer to make those things so I think it's definitely worth it for that massive packets of chips too like huge <laughs> so it really depends yeah. on what you uh what you purchase normally and what your normal sort of activity level is of whether it's worth it for you exactly yeah. they actually sell diamonds and electronics so there are some discounts there if you are interested but <laughs> you don't want to spend something that you will not buy you know yeah as times mm. yeah unless you're in the diamond market which uh I'm not at the moment, so there you go. Okay, so one thing I did want to mention is um, I know Pablo mentioned sale periods and Black Friday, you know, Boxing Day, media sales, like all of those sales we have throughout the year. Um, something interesting is that some stores are a little bit dodgy and they put up the prices just before <laughs> the sale so that they can say there's a big discount. But there is this Chrome extension called Camel Camel and it tells you if things are actually on sale and what the prices were a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that's something really interesting. I've heard this happening before. I didn't think it was real. Like I, I really thought surely that's not real or like, you know, people don't do that. But I've spoken to a few friends and they're actually like, yeah, I personally know people that work in retailers that actually do it quite often. Like it is a very standard practice. So yeah, sometimes you might think you're getting a good deal because you see this big 50% off, 40% off. But yeah, important to check. Is it actually a good deal? Mm. That's true. Like that's why it's good to see like the pattern with like the exact price, and then you can see if it's a real discount. Is it really thirty percent or fifty percent, or is it just fifteen percent <laughs> based on the price, the real price? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the real RRP. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. One thing I would like to mention is using credit cards, credit card points. For us, I think has been really good. Like we going a. Okay. We just went last year to Hawaii and we only paid around like $300 return flights plus points with Qantas. And like since we started using points, that really saved us a lot of money on travel, which is, I guess, one of our hobbies. So I think if you travel and if you're good with money, obviously credit card is not for everyone. That can be a good option to save money on travel. Yeah. And... Okay, <laughs> my next, last one, last one. Um, I would say if you're looking to buy books or like looking to get some new books, it, it is simple, but checking out your local library, there are some really great books there. And there's also this app called Borrow Box where you can actually borrow books and even audio books. Sometimes your local library might even have audio books available. So you don't even have to purchase those audio books because... Yeah, I think it, that's a good one to think about if you want to upskill yourself, upskill your knowledge, you know. There are a lot of great resources out there. Yeah, local libraries are fantastic resources and often they'll, even if they don't have the book you want because maybe it's a little bit more obscure or it's a newer title, they'll often, if you request it, they'll just buy it for you and you'll be first in, first in line to borrow that one. So it's a fantastic resource and they often 
offer a lot of free workshops and classes. Sometimes they have author talks. So it's a good good idea to get involved, get on the mailing list of your local library. Also, your local council often puts on lots of free activities. That's something I've discovered in the last year um, as a really good resource. And I went to a free circus class. So just random things you can give a go um, <laughs> if you just sign up to these things and find out. And yeah, the audio books is great because that's quite expensive using Audible. Um, I know you get free audio book now if you have a paid Spotify membership, um, but Audible does add up. So using your library, using all of the tools they have access to, the research databases, even your state library often has digital access as well that you can look at. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. So exciting. Well, I think we've covered a lot of different tips for people in this episode. There's a lot of things that people could just try one of them and see if they can save a little bit of money on their next purchase because we all want to save a bit more money this year. We all want to improve our financial future by putting a bit more money aside, getting out of debt, getting our emergency fund sorted, investing for the first time. So I think all of these different things, they might only sound like $5 here, $30 there, but they all add up. And that gives you $30 more to invest that you might not have had before. So I think these are fantastic resources, guys. And if you had to leave one message for people heading into the year ahead, one thing for people to take away, what what would you want to leave them with? I think that growth, it's not a linear progression. I feel like sometimes you might see, you might have all these ideas for what you'd like your future to look like and especially like your financial future to look like. And you might think that all of these five, ten, thirty dollar savings, like it's not really going to add up. But like Kate has said, like if you are investing your money, if you're putting aside money regularly, it's not a linear progression, it's a exponential progression. You know? So it might seem really slow at the beginning, and it often is with with anything that, that you're picking up that's new. But you'll start to see the the results of your hard work, maybe even like a year or two years down the line. And you might even get a lot further than you ever could have imagined you would get to, you know, and all because you started early. So just remember, growth is not linear. You know, your first 100,000 is the hardest, but it gets easier from there, you know? So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. It's always harder to start than it is to kind of like keep going, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's very Absolutely. true. And to add on top of that, it's like you can also uh, ask yourself like maybe very small goals that you can take off, you know, and go bigger and bigger over time rather than trying to reach for a very big goal that seems like unachievable and then you're not going to do it. But if you like take some few things, you know, let's say you do your bed the morning, already something done, and then you go for bigger goals. And that's a good way to to achieve big goals rather than start from the very big early on. I love it. I love it. Start small, but start now. And I think January 2024 is a great time if you are new to sorting out your money, to saving, to investing. It's a great time. I've got plenty more resources for you this month. And Queenie and Pablo also have a wonderful podcast. So I'll link that in the show notes. So you can get plenty more tips and tricks from them. They have so many fantastic episodes there. And Queenie, if people want to track you down and follow you and all of your fantastic tips on socials, where should they go? Uh, you can find me on Invest with Queenie on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. So yeah, I'll see you there. And Wonderful. we also have made an investing course with Rask. Yeah. So if you want to check that out, it will be in the show notes, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. If 2024 is the year you want to start investing. There is a fantastic course that Queenie worked so hard to put together that has all of the resources from figuring out why you want to invest to opening a brokerage account and taking your very first step. That will be linked in the show notes. Well, Queenie and Pablo, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Happy New Year and uh, look forward to speaking to you later in 2024. Oh, thank Thanks. you so much, Kate. Bye. 